Okay, so this is uh, this is joint work with uh, Andy Bernard and Yukiko Saito. Um, we're very happy to to be at Rovit, um, unfortunately virtually. I would have also loved to be in Milan today. Um, so this is uh, this is this paper. I think I get fit, fits well with uh, with Mark's paper. We're not really interested in knowledge spillovers, but we are definitely interested in knowledge creation and how knowledge creation uh, is um, is interlinked with with uh, geography and trade barriers. Um, so. I think we, we're pretty confident that travel time and geography and infrastructure is important for many different things. You can think of finding suppliers and customers. Um, with, with Andy and Yukiko, we have some previous work that we, where we show that this is important. Certainly for trade, investment and productivity, we know that this is important. In finance, we know that uh, geography also plays a huge role in terms of portfolio investment and business lending and so forth. Uh, but I think we know, uh, we don't know nothing, but we know less about how uh, these things respond or how innovation responds to, to these, uh, these things. Um, so, so in this paper, we're going to look at two margins. Uh, so the first is um, when it's more easy to travel and to, to, to talk to people, uh, how does that affect uh, your probability of finding other people to work with? And in our context, we're talking about inventors, uh, just as in, in Mark's paper. So this is uh, we're using patent data. We're looking at collaboration from, uh, uh, from the, the patent data. And finally, uh, how does this in turn uh, end up with uh, 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 more patents or perhaps less patents? So we're going to look at the productivity on, of uh, inventors. And this is what we kind of call, call knowledge creation. Um, okay, what do we do specifically? Uh, we're going to use patent data from the Japanese Patent Office. Uh, this is geocoded, so we know the precise location of the inventors and the applicants. But the inventors is going to be the main focus on, on uh, in this project. Um, Japan is a collection of four main islands, and the smallest of that island is called Shikoku. And that island was not accessible um, um, by, by car um, until 1988, when the first bridge was built. Before that, you had to use a ferry or, or air, of course. Um, so over a period of 10, 10 years, three bridges were built connecting the island to the rest of Japan. Um, so we're going to study, kind of follow these inventors and study the inventors that experience a large fall in their travel time, getting to the other side of of, uh, of the bridge, so to speak, uh, before and after the connections. So the simplest possible methodology here is just a different diff. We're going to do a little bit more as well. We can do an IV where we use the variation in distance over water that precludes bridge construction in some areas despite the similar need for a bridge. So the idea is that you have a lot of variation in, in where in, in distance over water, and there are only certain places where these bridges are kind of built meaningfully, kind of trying to minimize costs. So it's kind of cost, cost based shifter uh, type of instrument. Um, as I mentioned, the outcomes here is first going to be looking at who you work with. So the team characteristics on a patent that can be the size of the team, it can be the quality of the team, and it can also be something about geography. So how far away are your co authors, for example, on a given project? And finally, as I mentioned, inventor productivity. So that can be captured by simply the number of patents you produce, or uh, perhaps better, the citation weighted number of patents to say something about your, your impact uh, when doing innovation. OK, it's a short talk. And I'll try to do this relatively uh, quickly, but uh, hopefully also um, <laughs> coherently. Uh, so, uh, so a little bit on data and measurements, uh, then the research design and uh, the results. Um, the data is, as I mentioned, patent data from JPO from 1981, 2005. We know the applicants and the set of inventors. We know the precise location of the inventors and the applicants. And for the most part, we think that these are work addresses. So that's what I want you to have in mind. Uh, we're also going to use citation data, uh, uh, similar to, to Mark, but here we're looking at the citations that these, these inventors are receiving 
uh, not who they're giving them to. So citations here is only going to be a measure of the quality of a patent. Um, last week, we also got census data that I think is going to be useful for this project. So I'm going to show you some prelim preliminary results using the census data. This is uh, essentially employment uh, for each 10 by 10 kilometer grid in Japan. And it's going to be data from 85, 90, 95, 2000, 2005. Okay, um, some descriptives on the patent data. Uh, very quickly, we have around three to 400 patents in a given year, three to 400,000 inventors in a given year. The number of uh, inventors on a given patent is two on average. Uh, the number of patents per inventor is, is two on average. Um, and we have more applicants in the data. So applicants are, could be firms, but they're not only firms. And here we see fewer applicants, but they're patenting much more. So on average, an, an applicant has around nine, eight, nine patents in a given year. The, the inventors on Shikuku, this island that we're gonna study, uh, is 1.7% uh, of the total population of inventors uh, in 1988. So that means that we have roughly 3,000 inventors located on this island that became connected. We also have foreign inventors that um, are on patents that are filed in Japan. Clearly, um, we don't have much to say about them because we don't have uh, a geocode. We, we might have the country of, 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 uh, of residence. Uh, so these foreign inventors are not gonna be in our, our sample. I'm gonna measure knowledge productivity in a very simple way. I'm just gonna take the sites that I'm getting uh, from the beginning of time, which is 1981 in my sample, until year T, and just cumulatively add them up. So that's what this expression here says. So the ZIT is your cumulative number of, of uh, sites uh, for inventor I in year, year T. I'm interested in the quality of my team. Okay, so how do I measure the quality of my team? Well, a simple way of doing it is just to take the leave out mean of all disease of the guys that you're working with. So this is what this expression says. I'm taking disease from the previous year among all the people I'm working with in year T. Of course, not including myself. So that's the leave out, leave out. We also have some different measures of, of, of geography here in a team. Uh, perhaps the most simple one it's just uh, the, the average distance to your co-inventors in a given year T. Uh, so this is what this expression says. Uh, here we just chosen a normalization saying that uh, if the distance is zero, I, I say that the log of, of distance is zero. Um, and we're doing this because in a lot of cases we, we, we do observe a zero distance between inventors, essentially because they sit in the same building. Okay, so those are some of the objects that I'm gonna use in my reduced form analysis. Uh, but now let's go to the, uh, the actual uh, natural experiment that we're gonna uh, use. Um, Shikoku is, as I mentioned, one of the four main islands. The population here is, is 4 million. So from the perspective of Japan, this is a relatively small island, I guess, but from the perspective of, of Norway, where I'm sitting now, this is almost like the entire country of Norway in terms of the population. Um, the um, first bridge was the blue bridge on the map here, which was uh, opened in 1988. Then the eastern bridge was opened in uh, 1998, and the western bridge, the red one, opened in 1999. Um, the planning of these bridges started decades in advance. Um, there was a ferry collision in 1955 that basically killed 100 school school children because two ferries collided and that really motivated and kicked off the, these, the, these projects. In terms of travel time, we're looking at pretty large travel times before these bridges were introduced. I'll show you more in a minute. But for example, going from, from Kobe to the east, um, east northeast uh, to, to the first point there on the island took four and a half hours before the bridge was introduced. 
And now it's uh, roughly one and a half hours. Here's some eye candy. Uh, the Kobe uh, Expressway Bridge uh, in the lower, um, uh, lower picture there uh, is still the largest suspension bridge in the world. So these are like very, very big engineering feats, uh, multi-billion dollar projects. I mentioned reduction in travel time. Uh, this is from um, a publication called Straight Crossings from 2001. Here you see some estimates of the minutes used to uh, go from the east route to the island, central island, western route to the island by ferry and bridge. And you see that there are very, very big differences. So we're going to work with, uh, we're going to try to calculate the speed increase of going to the mainland or the island for all inventors in Japan. And you see from these numbers, uh, we're talking about the speed increase of two to uh, three times the, the original. Uh, uh, travel time. Big, big increase in uh, vehicle traffic uh, after these bridges were introduced. I'm not going to go into detail here, but uh, you see that we're talking about almost a three, uh, a tripling of the number of vehicles crossing from one side to the other uh, from the first bridge was introduced until uh, 2006. Okay, so here's our simple definitive. Um, I'm going to look at the change in outcomes for investors with a large or a small speed increase going from Honshu to Shikoku. So Honshu is the main island. Um, for the baseline regression, I'm going to focus on the two last bridges, so the 98 and 99 bridges. And I'm going to have a period of roughly 10 years, so 1994 to 2005, uh, so roughly the same period before and after the bridges. I'm going to base the location of an inventor from the patent data if I see him or her in 1998 or earlier in the patent data, that's kind of the, the treatment um, uh, location. Uh, and I'm going to find, define the speed increase uh, precisely on the next slide. Uh, so the diff-diff is going to be completely standard. It's going to be interaction between a post dummy and the treatment dummy. And we're going to have some, uh, some controls here. And these are going to be um, individual uh, fixed controls then interacted with the same uh, post dummy. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll go into details with these uh, controls, but I'll show you results both with and without them. What is the speed increase? So what we're going to do is construct a very simple algorithm to approximate the speed increase getting to the other side, no matter really just getting to the other side somehow. So we're going to measure the travel time from where you are to the bridge or the ferry port and then adding the time to cross using the ferry or the bridge. And then I'm going to minimize travel time conditional on the transportation network that existed in year T. And clearly, since we had the first, the central bridge was built in 1988. So really the inventors on like the central part of the island, they're not getting a much of a speed increase, but because they were already connected. And you can see this on this map. Um, dark and green hairs mean, means a, a bigger speed increase, so more, more treatment. And here you see clearly that it's the uh, inventors on the western part or the eastern part, both on the island or on uh, Honshu, that are the most treated inventors uh, using this methodology. Okay, uh, as Mark did, I'm going to show you some pre-trends. So uh, this is just that same regression, but with separate interaction terms for each year. And remember, these two bridges were opened in 1998 and 1999. Um, so we don't really see much of a, a pre-trend here, here at all. And it starts increasing slightly in 99, 2000, and seems to stabilize a little bit uh, from 2002. This is with no controls at all. If I plug in all those controls I showed you, it looks even a little bit more cleaner. So. So uh, more stable um, uh, after and, and past before as well. Okay, we can sum up this in a, in a simple uh, table where now we just have the post dummy and, the inter uh, and interacted with the treatment. And this is what it looks like. Um, the first column is for inventor productivity. The second for the team productivity. So the productivity of the people we're working with. And the third column is for the team size. Um, so what this tells us is that your inventor productivity is going up, you're becoming more, your team is becoming more productive. So somehow you match with people that are 
on average better uh, due to the bridge. Uh, whereas the team size seems to be slightly decreasing, although we have some issues with the data, so I'm, I'm not focusing too much on that. In terms of economic magnitudes, these are pretty big. Uh, we're talking about a roughly 10% increase in inventory productivity due to the bridge for those inventors that were located very, very close to the bridge. Okay, I don't have much time, uh, but let me focus on the two, two more things. Uh, so the first, I think, uh, a main question here is what is the mechanism? And one mechanism could simply be trade, that this island is getting better market access, and that's enabling uh, inventors to, to invent more due to relatively standard economic reasons that we, we're very, very well familiar with. So one way to tackle that is, again, to use this census data where we see employment in every location in Japan. So here we're simply controlling for the uh, employment in every location. So uh, the treatment is then conditional on, on a given level of employment, which should take out these market access effects, at least to, at least to some extent. And the results are more or less unchanged by doing that. Um, next, um, in terms of mechanism, again, we can look more into who you're working with as an outcome. So the first column here is simply the log uh, uh, distance to your co-inventors, as I mentioned, which is going up, which is, is suggesting that you're kind of branching out and reaching uh, co-inventors further away because now you have the bridge. Uh, we can also look at the share of Shikoku co-inventors. So how many from Shikoku are you working with? On average, that's going up slightly here. But what's perhaps more interesting is it's that it's going down quite substantially for inventors already on Shikoku. So this tells us that, well, if you're a Shikoku inventor, you don't want to work with Shikoku co-inventors anymore. You want to work with people from the mainland. Whereas for people on the mainland, it might be slightly opposite that for them, it might be actually good to work with people on Shikoku. So I mentioned that we're also doing an ID here. Okay, so I'll do the ID in one minute. The idea here is that uh, we want a cost uh, kind of based instrument that is, is telling us where these bridges should be built if we're just minimizing the construction costs, okay? So what we're doing is that we're looking at all possible pairs of where a bridge could be built across the strait. And we're picking the first, the, like the, the shortest distance, the second shortest distance, and the third shortest distance, and we're calling these kind of virtual bridges. Um, this is again a map of the actual bridges. Now let me show you the virtual bridges. And these are the, the circles. And you're seeing that they're almost on exactly the same location as the actual bridges. And not only that, the ordering is also the same. So the central bridge, that's the minimum distance you're crossing, crossing the strait. The eastern is the second minimum distance and the western is the third minimum distance. Now given these results it might not be a big surprise that if you instrument the, uh, the, the actual travel time with the instrumented travel time using these virtual bridges you're going to get a very very strong first stage with a coefficient close to one and also the two SLS results are also going to look very similar to the OLS results. So I guess this is more like a confirmation that the location of these bridges are in fact uh, put in those places where, you know, it's from an engineering point of view, I guess it's the only place you would put them. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna stop there um, to conclude. Uh, bridges boost innovation. Uh, they seem to also boost team quality. We're still working on exactly like pinning down the mechanisms even more. But uh, we think it's fairly likely that like face-to-face -face interactions um, um, is, is one important mechanism. Perhaps not the only one, but it, we think it's one. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, there are already questions appearing in the chat. Um, so, where were the ports located relative to the bridges? That's from Viktor Slavchev and from Marta Santa Maria. Are the citations a sign of the quality of the patent or a sign of the connections of the investors, of the inventors? 
um, more geographically dispersed inventors and teams will also have larger networks. Could you use some measure of profitability or applicability of the patent? And a third question from Naveen, uh, do you take into account all patent applications or only granted patent applications? And do you expect differences depending on the type of technology? Okay, great uh, questions. So I'll, I'll try to answer them as, um, as much as I can. Um, so uh, we've looked into the, the ferry ports and um, we do know that the, um, the, there were ferry ports more or less where the bridges were uh, were built. Um, there might be have been some other ferry ports in other locations as well, uh, and I can't answer that like precisely right now. Uh, but that's something we're, we're looking into. Um, second question is about uh, whether citations is a good measure of the quality of a patent. Um, well, um, I guess it's really the best we have. Uh, we've done this. Uh, not using citation weights at all, just using the, the pure, the rock patent count, which gives us very similar results. Um, surely the citation count might also reflect some other things. Um, uh, I guess to our defense, uh, remember that this is all kind of within inventor. So it's really just a change in the, in the sites for a given inventor that is driving the results. So if you, for some reason, you're in an industry or a technology class where there's lots of citations, this should really be taking care of all those time invariant things. Uh, but still, uh, you know, I fully agree that there might be an issue if, if these things are changing over time in ways that are correlated with, with uh, what we're interested in. Um, dispersed teams. Um, yeah, so... Uh, it would have been great to have some, some measure of the value of, of these patents um, uh, uh, in addition to just using sites. Um, right now, we don't, do not have that at all. Um, perhaps for a subsample, we, we, could, uh, we could merge it with, uh, with firm level data for some firms in Japan. Uh, so that's something we've been thinking about. Um, but right now, we, we don't have that. Um, are we using all patents or only granted? So, so right now we're using uh, granted patents. Uh, I don't think we've tried using all of them. And, and I guess my, yeah, uh, my prior would be also be that the granted patents are what we're really interested in here because we, we want to measure something that we think is related to innovation. Um, and using patents that are not granted is, is perhaps not uh, uh, the best. Okay, I think I was more or less through. So Andreas, there is a comment from Giordano Mion who says that he is not much convinced about the IV with cost minimization, but it's a general issue not specific to your framework. So that was a comment. I don't know if you want to address it in any way. At the moment, I see no more questions and I see no more panelists raising hands. Yeah, so, so about the instrument, it's, um, it's a little bit of a strange instrument because of course you get these huge F stats in the thousands and, and a point coefficient in the first stage more or less equal to one, right? So, um, uh, and the reason is simply that these virtual bridges are exactly located where the actual bridges is. So I see this more as a, I guess, just a sophisticated way of showing that, uh, cost considerations and just engineering constraints were a big uh, uh, driver in terms of locating these bridges, not necessarily you know, market size and being close to the city. Georgia has a question. I have a very quick question. Uh, Andreas, thank you, very interesting. What is, do you have an idea what is the direct, the geographical directions of the innovations, whether essentially this has increased innovation patterns within the islands? or on the border of the islands on the other side. So there has there been a movement towards more innovation in the periphery or even more concentration in the core? Yeah, that's a good point. So I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to go through that, but uh, what we have found so far is, is kind of interesting and I don't have a very good explanation for this now, namely that the inventors that were 
like highly treated, but were on the mainland, the results for them or the effect for them is actually bigger than the inventors on the island itself. So from, from that, I guess the, the, the answer is, well, it seems to benefit more the in inventors in the central locations compared to the periphery. And Jess, thank you very much.